Hi, it's product review time. Now, for the last six years or so, the Rigol DS1052E here has been pretty much the benchmark standard for entry-level scopes. It couldn't be beat for quite a long time, and there's quite a lot of competition to this now, but Rigol have released the new DS1054Z, and it's a four-channel scope, still 50 megahertz entry-level uh, bandwidth, but it's got more memory, it's got a bigger screen, it's got all sorts of bells and whistles built in. It's an absolutely killer scope for 399 US dollars or even less than that and different prices depending on which country you're in. So I've done quite a few videos on this already. This is going to be the summary review video, a bit different to how I normally do reviews. This will be about 10 minutes just direct overview of you know pros and cons of this scope. If you want more detailed stuff I've linked in videos down below. I've linked in the teardown video which has additional information. I've linked in uh, videos to uh, firmware issues and firmware fixes in this thing. I've linked in a reverse engineering version of this thing to see if it's uh, actually got the 100 megahertz bandwidth built in and yes it does. This is a summary review video. Let's go. First of all, it's a very small and compact scope, much smaller than what you would think. There it is compared to the size of my hand, but it is quite hefty and really feels like it's a real quality uh, designed and manufactured unit. Feels really good. All the buttons are pushable, which is excellent, so you get the additional functionality in there. Unfortunately, one downside is that the rotary encoders sometimes skip uh, the occasional menu item or overshoot or something like that, so just a little bit touchy on the encoders. Huge selling point is that it's four channels. Awesome, but unfortunately it doesn't come with auto probe interface around here, so it can't automatically detect the times 10 probe when you uh, plug it in. You've got to select that manually here, but eh, no big deal. And because it's four channels like this, and it's a very narrow and really compact scope, unfortunately you have to share the vertical controls here between all four channels, but that's the price you pay for such a small scope. And this really is a great scope for the beginner. Big green help button on the front. You hit that and then you can just choose any of the button which you need help with. Rise time, for example, it explains with waveforms exactly what the measurement function is for. Terrific stuff. Although the screen is relatively uh, large and high res for this particular size unit, unfortunately these menus on the left and right side here are fixed. You can't turn them off like you can on the 2000 series to expand the waveform to the full screen. Unfortunately, that's just a disadvantage of this particular model. And also, the fonts on these can be very, very small. So if you've got bad eyesight, that could be a real issue. And the screen is reasonably well laid out. You've always uh, got whether or not you're uh, triggered or you're waiting for a trigger up here. You've got your horizontal time base always displayed. You've got your vertical uh, controls always down here, which you can uh, select. It shows which one is highlighted and grays out the others. It always shows you the sample rate and the memory depth, so you always know where you stand with the scope. Very nice. Um, the uh, st pretty much standard uh, waveform uh, zoom display there. It always shows your delayed uh, offset of your waveform. Just a crazy thing like zero 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 picoseconds that's just nuts um, <laughs> little firmware issue and it always shows your trigger level up here and your waveform window here does actually shift up if you turn on these uh, measurement capability down the bottom here and you can change the font size of these as well so it's not overlaying your waveform data that's quite smart and even though it does have a nice big high resolution 800 by uh, 480 uh, widescreen on here with uh, 12 divisions which is excellent it is not the brightest thing on the market and the angle is not that terrific but it's adequate for the job. It takes about 22-23 seconds to start up. A little bit annoying but pretty much par for the course on these sort of scopes these days. Now the fan is unfortunately a little bit on the loud side. Not the loudest I've heard but eh, fairly distracting in a very quiet room. But anyway you could get in there and retrofit a uh, silent one in there. This is a basic band with the 50 megahertz. This was pretty good and it's a reasonable uh, one gig sample per second but that is only 
only for single channel like this. If you turn on a second channel like that, it halves to 500 meg. And if you turn on a third or a fourth, it drops down to 250 meg samples per second. And if you buy the 100 megahertz model, uh, then 250 meg samples across all four channels is not the best. So don't expect the full uh, 100 megahertz uh, bandwidth when you've got all four channels turned on. And the great thing is you get a lot of memory with this thing, 12 meg standard, or if you've got the upgraded model, 24 meg memory. That's a huge deep memory. But once again, if you turn on the multiple uh, channels, you do actually lose some of that, unfortunately. It really has very nice serial decoding and trigger capability. You can do uh, SPI, I squared C and RS232 in parallel, but unfortunately this is an optional extra. And it really does have an amazing range of measurement and statistics uh, capability. It's absolutely phenomenal for a low-end scope like this. Fantastic. And it's got your basic FFT functionality as you'd expect on a modern scope. And when you turn on uh, the measurements and the statistics and the FFT math and everything else it is still a reasonably responsive scope doesn't slow down a huge amount it's still usable and it's got all the mathematical operators you could possibly want terrific stuff in a low-end scope and it does have a USB host on the front you can just plug a key in and then you can just uh, store uh, either the waveforms the actual data all the data itself you can analyze later or you can uh, get screen captures really easy and it comes standard on the back with a trigger out and pass fail uh, output as well for mass testing yes it does have full mass testing built in and it does have uh, LXI LAN capability built in as standard. Fantastic! Until you realize that Rigol software is just crap. It basically does not come with any software. It comes with really annoying drivers. Fortunately, some people have written some decent third-party uh, apps to uh, talk to this thing and analyze data and operate it remotely, but Rigol, they don't provide anything. And one of the best things about this scope, and absolutely incredible for the price, it has one of the best intensity graded displays on the market. Look at that. It's got 64 uh, shaded levels. Not as good as the Rigol 2000 series, but still very impressive, very analog like display and very fast updating as well especially for uh, the price of uh, up to 30,000 waveforms per second so I it's this is one of the best intensity graded displays on the market can't be beat fantastic very analog like if you're coming from an analog scope and it does go down to one millivolt per division in fact if you get the hack for the thing it does go down to 500 microvolts but the hardware doesn't really support it properly so don't bother but it's got uh, normal uh, peak average and high resolution mode as well which works really nice it's a reasonably low noise scope and it's got a built-in hardware frequency counter as well fantastic unfortunately it doesn't have any uh, software or hardware filter in it on your input signal so no low pass or high pass filters unfortunately and the dual screen uh, delayed time base works exactly as you'd expect and with the very deep memory on this thing it's a very powerful tool and if you go into triggering here there is a ridiculous amount of triggering options even runt pulses and everything else and you can uh, trigger off the serial ones as well but these are optional extra they're not standard and these are the, all the various options that you can get all the triggering ones the decoders the memory depth up to uh, 24 meg the uh, recorder which is the segmented uh, memory feature and the bandwidth up to 100 megahertz uh, so you can buy these and yes the scope is hackable because the 100 megahertz bandwidth is actually physically built into the uh, hardware and the software uh, options as well so yeah, if you're into that sort of thing it is possible at the moment unfortunately some of the menu options in here can be a bit uh, convoluted you have to go um, you know to a secondary menu like this and it shows you these little dots here show you which menu you're on and it can just be a little bit intimidating and convoluted for the beginner until you get uh, used to the thing you got and you've got to realize that all of your measurement capability over here all your buttons and all these menus are all dedicated so you can go horizontal and vertical and all these measurement functions down here it's ridiculously powerful the amount of measurement capability but it is very nice to actually have all these dedicated buttons here you know this side of the scope is just for measurements but 
as I said, it does take up some permanent screen area. And things like the segmented memory, they're buried away in the utility menu here, and it's called Record, so it's not as good as the uh, 2000 series Rigol with its dedicated segmented memory uh, control on the front. So it's basically a Record uh, replay feature, and as I said, this is uh, optional, but it allows you to extend the already deep memory to actually uh, capture a ton of data that's not possible with any regular scope. And you get these RP2200 uh, switchable times 1 times 10 passive probes with it, 150 megahertz uh, bandwidth, which is a pretty good. They're reasonable quality. I'm not going to write home about them, but you do get four of them. Awesome. Did I mention it's a four channel scope for 399 bucks? So there you have it. That's a summary of the Rigol DS1054Z. What's my verdict? Huge thumbs up. Seriously, if you're in the market for an entry level scope under, say, anywhere under 500 bucks or something like that, possibly anywhere under a thousand, just go and buy this. Don't bother buying anything else. It simply cannot be touched. Unless, of course, you've got a very specific requirement like the uh, font's too small or, or something like that. But it's a well-made uh, scope. It does still have a few little uh, design issues, maybe a few uh, quirks and things like that. But the price per performance, the bang per buck, you get with this thing for $399, the four channels, the um, all the great measurement capability. Yes, it is hackable if you want to do that uh, sort of thing at the moment. And just the amount of analysis capability built in. It's just oh, the intensity graded dis analog like displays, one of the best on the market. And you get all this and it's pretty fast updating as well. And you get all this for under 400 bucks. Unbelievable, the market's completely changed. So seriously, I cannot see another scope that offers the same bang per buck as this. It, at the moment, it cannot be beat. The equation might change. It's the start of 2015 now. The equation might change in a year's time. If you're still watching this video in 2016 or 2017, this Rigol DS1052E hung around for like six years. It, it led the market for like four and a half, five years, probably. Um, and this one might do the same. That remains to be seen, but just go out and buy it if you're in there. Just don't worry. Just Get this. That's it. Easy. Makes your decision easy.